So if I uh, have a rope, it's really short on each side, like I'm kind of choking up on these things right now. Again, you saw how much it had to spread apart. There's a dramatic resistance change here. And for that reason, we decided to put together, raise this up a little bit, something longer on each side. So now, as I start out, I've got maybe a 20 degree angle between these two, okay? And as I finish with my hands beneath my shoulders, I've only got about maybe a 40 degree angle. And as you remember from our charts we were looking at, our, our illustrations, the difference between 30, 45, something like that was very small, just like one or two pounds. Well, that is a much more consistent resistance for you. And of course, we can do the same thing on this that we could with the single webbing handles when we use them for triceps. So instead of having to be fully pronated, not that you, you can if you like that. If you want to be fully pronated much like you would be on a regular you know, straight bar, that's fine. But I can slip the PVC so that I'm either neutral or close to neutral. Much more comfortable position, much easier to stabilize. And here's something else to think about, okay? I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, when I use the straps, I hold them at shoulder width when I use this thing. And it kind of gives me a headache when people say that. I understand where they're coming from because if they've ever watched our, some of like our, our tapes that we have maybe for triceps and that kind of thing, we talk about using a straight bar instead of grabbing it in here, using the straight bar at shoulder width. Why? So that you don't have to move your shoulder joint also. And you can just isolate this, the joint motion of elbow extension only. But folks, don't hold this at shoulder width. The whole great thing about this is that it moves. So you can start narrow and still end up below your shoulders with your hands. In other words, you can do the motion of elbow extension on each side without having to move your upper arm, which was the whole point of this grip on a, on a fixed bar, okay? But just realize now, because see, if I, look, if I held my hands this wide as I did this thing, this outward force requirement that I drew for you in all those illustrations would be performed by my external rotators of my shoulder, which may or may not be appropriate or something you want. If you're really thinking triceps here, let them start narrow but angle the axis. In other words, I'm letting, instead of being like this, I'm turning them so that each axis is kind of sitting at an angle like this and they're moving apart. And that way, the application of resistance is, is fairly appropriate. And of course, you don't have to turn them very much um, with this thing that, that spreads apart very little. But you can see how I'm moving through two converging planes in a sense. I'm not trying to move through two parallel planes and hold this thing apart. That defeats the purpose. But you know, triceps, when you've got one this long, tricep exercises are just one of the many things that you can use this for. Where a rope, you're pretty much stuck with triceps only if you're going to use it, maybe some kind of curl or something. But what, look what I can do here. If I, let's say that I uh, was on a real pull down machine instead of just this cable cross thing. Um, instead of sitting on the seat, I could go down and maybe sit on the floor of my pull down machine and I can do a version of like a wide grip pull down. Only a typical wide grip pull down, you're stuck on this bar, this straight bar. I mean, it's bent on each end probably where you grab it, but you're stuck on it. You go up to the top of the motion, you can't get any more range, you can't get a better uh, movement through it. But this allows you to start all the way almost together, and then you bring those elbows wide and apart. And of course, it works great when you're just moving through this sagittal plane motion as well. But this is really neat to be able to do this, okay? So you can you get a better range if that's what you're desiring. And of course, now remember, your resistance is changing much more dramatically now because look how much I've spread that apart. So the resistance train, the change is, is pretty dramatic and you have to decide if that's appropriate for you. But I can also, and this makes a great rear delt device, okay? It's like if you're on your normal, your cable rowing, uh, machine and you're seated there, right there I can get into the transverse plane of movement and notice with all of these I am just letting my forearm remain in line with the webbing on each side. Because if I try to push it further it's going to bring in a bunch of elbow muscles or if I try to bend it like this it's going to bring in a bunch of elbow muscles that I may or may not want. Okay, You make that decision. But I'm just letting my uh, arms, I'm kind of leading with my elbows. 
So this, in a sense, this forearm and stuff just becomes part of the, uh, the cable or the, uh, the webbing there. So again, a great rear delt exercise. If I was stuck on a bar that allowed me to get this wide, by the time I get up here, you know, it would be a very limited range. Whereas here I can go towards the center, yet still go out to the end of the range, the shoulder range on that. I could also use this, talking about that cable row machine, I could do just cable rows like this, not that the, the width part is uh, providing resistance within my plane of motion, but it allows me to, to float with my hands wider. So, you know, you, could, you can start with them kind of close like this, and they can come back to your shoulder width, which, you know, those little narrow handles, those little like four inch wide metal handles, they don't allow you to do that. So that's why this would be a better device than the little narrow fixed handles. So there's a lot of things you can do, and even on the rows, you know, your grip, your grip, um, the angle at which you grip something through the center of your palm, kind of, is also, it is not perpendicular to your forearm, right? So what I mean by that is, if you have a handle, like a metal handle, that is exactly perpendicular to the cable, well, that's not a natural grip exactly. And what you'd actually probably prefer is something that was very slightly angled with the, the first finger part being a little further from your elbow than the little finger part. That's really a more normal grip. And again, that's what these, these handles like this with the PVC over the webbing, it allows me to do that. So there are a lot of tremendous advantages to having this type of handle, whether it's the, the single webbing handle or the double webbing handle, which brings all the physics into it also. But like any tool, it's very, very important that you take the time to learn what's going on behind it. You just, you can't envision probably any doctor using a tool on you to apply any kind of force without knowing what he was doing. I mean, you'd sue him right off the bat. So this is not just about experimenting. This is about understanding before you experiment. And always try it with yourself before you would try it with the client. But these can be unbelievable tools, and you can do things you probably never thought of before.